Chapter 46 Sand Dunes I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Hamim, letters of the Arabic language of which God alone knows what they refer to and mean. But Ibn Abbas, may the Lord be pleased with him, offered this explanation instead. These letters mean that everything that happens, happens as the Almighty has said. This scripture is from God, the Mighty, the Wise. We created the heaven and earth with a true purpose and for a specific length of time. It will all last until the day of resurrection, when some will feel my wrath and some my protection. Yet the disbelievers ignore what lies in store, ignoring warning sent and unwilling to repent. Tell them, Prophet, consider the other gods to whom you pray. Can you point to what they created of the earth and how they shaped it that way? Or show me exactly what part of the heavens they own? Or bring previous scripture with divine knowledge, which your gods claim as their own? This should all be easy if what you say is true, but there is no one more wrong than one who calls other people to false gods and idols that bring no success and lead them to the hellfire to be filled with regret. And the false gods they worshipped will not say a word to such fools. They aren't aware of their prayers, and in the next life they are the ones who will be enemies of the disbelievers and disown all they did, and the idol worshipper will realise the folly of the actions committed when they lived. As they prayed to an item that had no life or comprehension, and in life they cried out when they were shown the revelation, this is surely just sorcery, and they paid it no attention, saying Muhammad made it up himself. They did not comprehend our warnings or engage in reflection. Say, Prophet, if I had made it up, you couldn't save me from the Lord. He knows what you say of the Qur'an and the secrets your hearts store. He is a sufficient witness to who is right between you and me. He is the source of forgiveness and the source of mercy. I am not the first of his messengers. I don't know what will be done with me. I only follow what has been revealed and come to warn you plainly. O Jews of Medina, have you ever stopped to think, what if this Qur'an is truly from the Lord, and you reject the lines within it, treat them like something to abhor? When a man from amongst you Israelites, Abdullah bin Salam, has already confirmed it is the likeness of the scripture, the Torah, that you carry in your hands. So are you too proud to do so too? and choose Islam as the true faith to embrace. God does not guide those who do evil. It is the evil ones who said, If the Qur'an were truly good, we would have been the first to believe in it instead, as we are better than these believers. We are of a higher class and a higher kin, so surely this Qur'an is not something to be believed in. And because they rejected its message, they said, These are ancient fabrications. But before it came a scripture offering guidance and mercy through Moses' proclamations. This scripture comes in Arabic, confirming what came before, to warn those who do evil and give the good, glorious news of what lies in store. Those who say God is our Lord then follow his words will have no fear upon them, they will get what they deserve. They will receive paradise and stay for all eternity, and have the finest of dwellings with which they will be well pleased and they'll have partners of beauty and hear no idle words said, because on earth they shunned false gods and followed God's words instead. We commanded man to be good to his parents. His mother struggled in carrying him in birth, then weaned him as he grew, and then when he reaches the age of forty on earth, he may say, Lord, let me be grateful for your favours unto me, gain the blessings of my parents and help me do work with which you are well pleased. Make my offspring obedient, let them follow in this faith. I turn to you with my requests, I devote myself to you and hope for your face. We accept from such people the good deeds they do and overlook the sins that they also accrue. They'll be people of the garden, a true promise will be given unto them, but some say to their parents, you think after I have died I will be raised again? When so many generations have passed and gone before me, this is surely far-fetched, something I will not believe. And the parents pray to God and tell their offspring, Listen, you must believe, God's promise is true. And still the reply comes, These are just ancient stories, I will not believe you. The verdict is passed on such people, 
and previous jinns and humans like them and all their communities head for destruction. On the day of judgment, those who believe will be ranked and rewarded according to their deeds, and God will repay them in full for all they have done, and everyone will have what they have earned, no one will be wronged. On that day, those who denied the fire will be brought to it and informed, you squandered the opportunity to avoid what lies in store. You used up the good of your deeds to have pleasure while on earth, were arrogant with no right, so now you have only shame at the rebirth. Tell the people clearly of the prophet Hud of the tribe of Ad and what happened to them. He warned them amongst the sand dunes, but his people paid no attention to him. And others came too before his time and after him, saying, Worship none but God, I fear for you in the state that you are in. You will all be punished on the most terrible day, but his people ignored him, saying, Do you wish to turn us from our idols who we have faith in? If so, show the punishment you promise. We are waiting to see what you bring. And he said, Only God knows when it will come, and I am only sent to give the message to you, but you are an ignorant people. You are only speeding up the coming of the punishment you're due. And they saw a cloud forming on the horizon, and they turned to one another and said, This cloud will bring the rain, but Hod said, No, it will bring your destruction instead. By the command of its Lord, it will become a hurricane, and in the morning, only ruined houses were left. This is how the guilty are repaid. And Meccans, we have given those of Ad wealth and power, much greater than what we have given unto you. And they were given eyes, ears and hearts to see, hear and understand what they needed to do. But they did not use them. Instead they turned from their Lord, denied revelation, and were then destroyed by the very punishment they had scorned. We have also destroyed communities that once flourished in this place. We give their stories as a sign so you may repent and return to the right way. They too worshipped idols, but their gods did not help them. They failed them utterly, as their gods' powers were a lie of Ad's making. They had set up those gods, saying they would draw them closer to their Lord, but God has no partners or children. And Jesus himself will say the idea of him being a god is utterly flawed. We sent a group of the jinn to you, Prophet, to listen to the Qur'an, and they told each other to be quiet as they listened, and then went to their community to warn, saying we have heard a scripture, after the one that Moses did bring, confirming the ones before, leading to the straight path, containing guidance within. Respond to our call, turn to God, believe in him and repent. He will forgive you your sins and protect you from the painful punishment. Those who fail to respond cannot escape God anywhere in the earth and will find no one to protect them against his punishment so terse. Those who reject this are truly astray and will have no helper or protector to defend them in any way. Do the disbelievers not see? God created heaven and earth and did not tire in doing so and has the power to bring back the dead to life just as he makes barren land regrow. He has power over all things, all things are in his grasp, and when the disbelievers are brought before hell, they will then surely be asked, is the punishment not real? And they will say yes by our Lord, and they'll then be told, then taste the punishment for your denial, and the evil you have stored. Be steadfast, Muhammad, like messengers before you were steadfast and do not seek the punishment for the disbelievers to come upon them so fast. On the day of judgment, they will see that my warnings were true, and it will feel like their whole life on earth lasted only an hour or two. This is the warning that is of no use to those who do not have faith. None will be destroyed but the defiant and those who followed in their wake. Chapter 47 Muhammad I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. The deeds of those who disbelieve will come to nothing on judgment day. There'll be no good stored for those who bar others from God's way. But God will overlook the sins of those who do good deeds and have faith, who believe in what was sent to Muhammad, and know that wherever they turn, east or west, they turn to their Lord's face. They believe the Quran is sent from the Lord and will have contentment in their minds as they follow the truth from their Lord, 
while others choose falsehood and cast revelation aside. In allowing this, God shows people the state they are in. Some will have nothing, and others are forgiven. He is the Lord of East and West, the knower of the apparent and the hidden. When you meet the disbelievers at Uhud in battle, kill them, and when the battle is done, captives must be bound firmly, then freed or held for ransom. God could have defeated the disbelievers himself, but he tests you through others indeed, so killed believers can have the garden as a reward, while hell is what the dead sinners receive. The deeds of those killed in God's cause will not have been in vain. They'll be guided to the garden. They are the ones the Lord has saved. They will know where their homes are in the garden. They will not need a guide. So you who believe, help God and the messenger and stand firm in battle on God's side. But those who do not believe in their Lord will be in a terrible state. God will bring their deeds to nothing and destruction will be their fate. Because they hate the revealed Quran, God makes their good deeds go to waste. Have they not seen the fate of previous disbelievers on their travels from place to place? God destroyed previous sinners and the sinners of Mecca will have the same fate too. God protects those who believe, but sinners do not receive the protection the righteous do. God will admit those who believe into gardens that are graced with flowing streams and the disbelievers can enjoy the life of this world, but then in the fire will wail and scream. And Prophet, we have destroyed many greater towns than Mecca, which has expelled you. They had no one to help them in any way when the punishment from their Lord was due. Can those who follow the clear proof from God be compared to those who follow their desires, those whose foul deeds are made alluring to them and towards sinful acts aspire? Compare a picture of the garden with what the sinners will have in hell. One will burn amidst the flames and have a terrible drink that will tear through their bowels as well. But the believers will be given what they are promised, rivers of utter delight, honey, milk and water, and have every type of fruit in sight. Some of those people who hear your words mock what you say when they leave, saying, what was that? We will not listen again. They are the ones whose hearts God has sealed. As we make clear the ways of good and bad and leave people to choose a path, give them eyes to see and a tongue to speak and count their every deed from first to last. Such people follow their own desires and are not like the ones who are on the path that's straight. He has increased each believer's awareness of the one, the majestic, the great. What else will the disbelievers wait for? other than the hour which will strike them unaware. When it comes, it will be too late to repent, and its signs can be found everywhere. So Prophet, hold in mind there is no God but God. Ask forgiveness to show your people what to do, and ask for the forgiveness of all the believers, and remember God knows your every move. There are some who ask why no verse has been revealed on fighting in God's way, but when a decisive verse is revealed, you will see the sick at heart's worry on each face. They visibly faint from fear of death, but obedience and respectful words to you would be best, and better still to be sincere and go and fight with the believers in a way full of truth and zest. If you turn away now, it could well be that you'll spread corruption, returning to pagan ways, and sever the ties of kinship. These are the ones to be rejected by the one worthy of all praise. He makes them blind and makes them deaf to the path of the righteous and call to good. Will they not contemplate the Qur'an? The example of such hypocrites within it is clearly not understood. Those who turn on their heels after being shown guidance are truly following the ways of Satan. They say they follow some parts of God's words, but deep down they truly hate them. They agree to struggle against the Prophet and strive to keep him and the believers apart. But God is aware of all of what his creation do. He knows their secret schemes that dwell in their hearts. How will they feel when the angels take them at death and beat their faces and backs with iron rods? Their sinful acts lay waste to their good deeds and they earn themselves the wrath of God. Do the corrupt believe God won't expose their feelings? If we chose, we could reveal them indeed. We could identify them by their marks but you will recognize them from the tone of their speech. God knows all you people do, 
and will test you to see who will strive hardest and who remains firm, and we will reveal what you have stored in your record, and you will receive what your deeds have earned. Those who disbelieve do not harm God in any way, even when trying to keep others from his path, by opposing the messenger and rejecting guidance, but the believers will have the last laugh. God will make their good deeds go to waste. Believers do not let the same happen to you. God will never forgive those who disbelieve or bar others from God and die as disbelievers too. So believers, do not weaken when fighting disbelievers. You have the upper hand. God is on your side. He will reward you for your faith and good deeds. Don't be fooled by the game of this illusory life. It is only a test and only a plaything. Believe and obey God and he'll grant you reward. He doesn't ask you to give up possessions. If he did, you'd begrudge doing so and reveal your flaws. Your ill will would show at such a request, and those asked to give a little give a small amount. Whoever is grudging only withholds reward from themselves and forgets they'll be held to account. As all wealth comes from God, it is man who is in need, and if you turn away you will be replaced by others who will not be like you, but will be obedient and long for the greatest prize in heaven. They long to see their Lord's face. Chapter 48 Triumph I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. We have created a clear triumph for you, Muhammad, in conquering Mecca, the holy city, so God will forgive you your past and future sins and make you an example to your community. So they see the benefit in your example of struggling in God's way, and so God perfects his favour to you, helping you on the straight path of this faith. It was he who put peace in the hearts of believers through rulings on how to live their lives. The forces of heavens and earth are his. He is the almighty and wise. He sent these rulings to give believers a chance of the garden and its flowing streams. It is a true blessing given from God after he forgives their sinful deeds. And he sent the rules to abase the hypocrites and idolaters who harbour ill thoughts of their Lord. They will be surrounded by evil and carry the burden of God's anger and the hellfire for them lies in store. God is the Almighty, God is the wise. The forces of heaven and earth belong to him. We have sent you prophet to the people to spread good news and to give them warning. We believe in and support and honour God and believe in the messenger too and to glorify God in the morning and evening and pray prayers at the time they are due. Muhammad, believers are pledging their loyalty to God when they make a pledge with you. God's hand is placed on theirs when they pledge as he sees all that they do. And whoever breaks this pledge will only be wronging themselves, wronging their own soul, as they will miss out on the reward that God will give to those who make obedience to God their goal. The desert Arabs who did not join you as you headed to Mecca will come and speak to you, saying we only stayed to protect our families and our property, so ask God to forgive us too. But they are saying with their tongues what is not in their hearts, they are telling you lies. Say to them, whether God wills you harm or good, who could intervene in any way on your side? No, God is all aware of what you do. God knew you thought you would die in that expedition, and you were pleased with those thoughts, such was your evil heart's condition. You are truly a corrupt people with unsound hearts. Your hypocrisy is indeed known. God has prepared for such believers a blazing fire as their home. God controls the heavens and the earth. He forgives and punishes whoever he chooses. He is the most forgiving and merciful. Those who turn from him will be of the losers. Believers, when you set off for battle gains, such people as those who stayed behind will ask, let us come with you, as they want to change what God decreed of their cowardly past. As God had promised the spoils from this battle to those who set out on the mission before, tell them no, God has spoken on this issue. They'll say you are jealous and nothing more. You begrudge us sharing in the spoils. See how little of God's words they understand. Tell them you will be called to face a mighty people in a war that is close at hand. If you obey, God will reward you well, but if you turn away as you did previously, you will receive a mighty punishment that will weigh upon you heavily. 
but those who are blind or sick or lame will have no blame attached to them, and anyone who follows what he and his messenger decrees will be admitted to the garden. God was pleased with the 1500 believers who pledged allegiance to you under the tree. God knew what was in their hearts, so sent them ease and gave them a speedy victory. He knew they would fight and be truthful and loyal, so he removed zealotry from them. God is mighty and wise and promises you future successes and battle gains again. God has held back the hostile hands of your enemies as a sign from him that he will guide you to the straight path and to rely on God in any situation you are in. There are many other gains to come to you over which you have no control or say. God has full power and control over all things as by him all things are made. If the disbelievers of Mecca had come to fight you before the treaty, they would have taken flight, as they would have none to protect or support them against the power of God's might. Such is the way God deals with disbelievers, and it will always be that way. You'll find no change in how God deals with the disbelievers. God's promise is true in every way. It was God who held back the 80 Meccans who came to kill you, Muhammad. He ensured that you detained them, and after the treaty of al hadabiyah was signed, he allowed you to set them free again. The Meccans stopped you from going on the pilgrimage, but amongst them were some believers, and had it not been for them, we would have allowed you to crush the evil deceivers. But because the righteous were in their midst, God knew you would rush in and kill them too, and the sin of killing a believer would have fallen upon some of you. God gives of his mercy to whoever he wills, and if those believers were identified and separated, God would have let you storm the Meccans with your swords and left them annihilated. Those disbelievers had ignorant fury in their hearts, but God gave the believers peace and tranquility. God has knowledge of all things. They held firm to the oath they made and instantly obeyed me. They did not seek to continue to Hajj that year, but made a truce to return the next. And though some Muslims felt the truce not in their favour, they agreed that God knew best. And next year God truly fulfilled the Prophet's vision that he would go on Hajj and feel safe, shaven-headed or with cropped hair, standing at the house in the most sacred place. God knew what you did not, and he granted you this triumph with speed. It is he who sent this religion of truth to prevail over all others indeed. God suffices as a witness that Muhammad is his messenger and those who follow him comply in being harsh with those who disbelieve and gentle and compassionate with Muslim allies. They are the ones who kneel and prostrate and seek God's bounty and pleasure. They are the ones with light of prayer in their faces. They are the ones who seek the garden's treasure. They are pictured in the Torah and Gospel as being a seed that starts to grow, becoming strong and thick and rising on its stems bringing delight to those who sow. Such is the example of the believers, who were once weak and their numbers few, but then they sought strength in a wholesome way and their numbers vastly grew. God enrages the disbelievers through them as their numbers grow and they obey him. God forgives and rewards those who believe and do righteous deeds and has prepared the garden for them to dwell in. Chapter 49, Private Quarters I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. O believers, do not perform an action until a command has been given from the messenger to you. Do not raise your voices above the prophets in discussion. God knows and hears all that you do. Do not speak to the prophet in raised tones as you do when talking amongst yourselves, as you may counsel out your good deeds, and call him not by his first name, you something else. Call to him with words of respect, like God's messenger or God's prophet. Those who lower their voices have God-aware hearts and will be well rewarded for it. But you who shout to call the prophet from outside his wife's homes in a manner rough and rude, you do not understand the prophet's status. Such ill manners are not befitting for you. It would be better if you waited outside until he had come out to prayer and lead. God knows and hears all you do and to the repentant he is forgiving and merciful indeed. Believers, if a troublemaker brings you news, check its accuracy before acting on it, lest you act upon something that turns out to be untrue and then later on regret. 
This was the case when Al-Walid ibn Uqba was sent to speak to Banu al-Mustaliq. He returned and began to lie, saying that they tried to kill him, as he had a personal grudge with them stemming from pagan times. And the Prophet was about to wage war on Banu al-Mustaliq, and we revealed this verse to him. And emissaries from Banu al-Mustaliq then came to Muhammad and confirmed that Al-Walid was lying. And believers remember it is a messenger of God among you. He follows what God decrees. If he were to follow most of the advice you offer, you would be in trouble and sin, so ill at ease. But God has given you faith in your hearts and firmly made it beautified, making disbelief and mischief and disobedience hateful to you, so you cast such things aside. Such people are the ones who are rightly guided. They are blessed and favoured by the Lord. He is the all-wise and all-knowing one with whom all your deeds are stored. If two groups of believers fight, other believers should try to reconcile them as best they can. And if one is oppressing the other, fight the oppressor until they submit to God's command. As they should try to resolve the problem by referring to the Qur'an. And if they agree to this, make peace and be just with both. God loves every just and even man. The believers are brothers in religion, so make peace between them when any disputes arise, and be mindful of God so you may be given mercy. Your Lord is all-knowing and wise. And believers, none of you should make fun of another group who may be better in God's eyes. Do not speak ill of one another, or use offensive nicknames or terms used in pagan times. And women should not mock other women who may be closer to God than them. How terrible for a person to have accepted faith and then be referred to with a pagan name again. Those who do such things and do not repent are clearly evil ones, and do not be very suspicious indeed, there is sin in some of your suspicions. And do not spy or speak ill of people, doing so behind their backs. It is like eating the flesh off your dead brother, and not one of you would like that. So be mindful of God, the ever-relenting, he is the merciful one, the one who created all of mankind from a single man and woman. Then he made you into nations and tribes, so you can learn from one another with respect, and know that lineage and colour make no difference in God's eyes in determining who is best. As some Qurayshis mock the black man Bilal, saying, Is there none other than this raven to make the prayer call? But the most honoured of people will be ones like Bilal, most aware of God. God is knowing and aware of all. And some desert Arabs come to you and say, Muhammad, we have faith. Tell them that it is not so, and that we have submitted is what they should say. As faith is not in their hearts, so although you outwardly follow, repent the internal hypocrisy, and God will deal with you by being forgiving and treat you most mercifully. True believers believe in God and the Messenger and leave all their doubts behind. The truthful ones struggle with possessions and lives with only God's way in mind. So tell those desert Arabs, will you teach God the religion and tell him who the sincere ones are when he has knowledge of all things in heaven and earth and the secrets of every heart? And Muhammad, they think they've done you a favour by submitting and in saying that they submit, tell them it is God who has done you the favour if you're sincere in faith, he has guided you to it. Chapter 50 Qaf By the Qur'an I swear that you, Muhammad, are warning the disbelievers of what will come. Yet they say, what a far-fetched idea, such a thing cannot be done. How will we be raised from our graves and reformed when we are dust and dead? But we know well what occurs to bodies after death. We know well what lies ahead. We keep a detailed record, thorough and comprehensive, Yet the disbelievers abhor the truth you bring, and they turn fearful and apprehensive. Do they not note the sky from its clouds and constellations? Do they not see that their perfection is a more complex element of creation? What then in comparison is the reforming of dust back to bone and flesh? Consider too the extent of the earth and mountains, will the disbelievers not reflect? Have they not seen a plant wither, rot and go underground and soon regrow? Is this process familiar to them, or is it something yet unknown? Do they not see the water fall from the sky, making dead land fertile once again, providing date palms and green gardens, and row upon row of harvestable grain? 
and as it is with the re-emergence of plants from barren land that was of water in need, so will be the resurrection of man who was made from a tiny clot indeed. The disbelieving words of the Quraysh and others like them are not new. So it was with the people of Noah, Ad, Ras, the Mood, and many others too. And for them the punishment was due, and these disbelievers head for the same fate for ignoring the warnings brought by you. Did we not give the disbelievers life in this first creation? Is it not just as easy for us then to recreate them and flesh their bones into reanimation? We created man and know the desires and warnings his soul whispers to him, and we are closer to him than the main vein which his life's blood flows in. We have assigned each man watchers on his shoulders, recording every deed, noting all he's said and done for him on judgment day to see. For when the trumpet is blown and people are raised again, they'll be informed this is the day, the day of judgment, the day of which his warnings you arrogantly cast away. And man's recording angels will spur him and his devil on to the meeting place and say, See you now the truth of what you called a lie and deemed frivolous poetic wordplay. And hell will be his home where he will be accompanied by malicious, aggressive rumour spreaders and those who chose to lie. Along with idol worshippers and those who mocked the warning scent, they will taste the endless fiery bitterness of God's punishment. And even then his scheming jinn, each person has one assigned, will try to absolve himself of sin, saying I did not force his hand once, all the transgressions were done by him, and God will ensure their silence and remind them that the chance has passed, and that his words will never change, and that he is just to all his creatures and cared for them all the same. And on that day as hell reaches capacity, it will be asked whether it will be full soon, and it will respond in loyal tones, my Lord ensures I will always have room. And paradise will be brought to the righteous, an abode truly one of a kind, and they'll be told this is the reward for those who are aware of God and keep God firmly in mind, who believe in God even though he was unseen, who presents his heart in the best of states, utterly pure and thoroughly clean, They will have everlasting joy and all of what they wish, and God will then also bestow on them so much more than this. So remind the disbelievers, we destroyed more powerful generations, search their remnants I have left as signs, did they escape the annihilation? Those whose hearts are wise will heed the lessons learnt of those from the previous age, knowing we created the heavens and earth and all between them with ease within six days. Those who claim I rested on the seventh day tell a terrible lie. We do not become weary, we do not become overcome, nor do we ever tire. So prophet, bear with what they say, and be of the patient ones. Praise your Lord before the rising and setting of the sun, and proclaim his glory all through the night, supplicate and perform extra prayers, and await the call from Israfil in Jerusalem, commanding the earth to peel back its layers. The graves will burst forth and all creatures will be brought back to life and for the disbelievers the flames of hell will be the only evidence of the hereafter that will suffice. Only then will they realise that we were in control of life and death and the resurrection and on that day some will feel my wrath and some will have my protection. And we know what they say, you are not to force them or anything like such and the disbelievers will plainly see this was all so easy for us. So Muhammad cautioned them again with this Qur'an, but never force a soul to do anything. For the believers, this sacred text is enough for them to heed my warning. Chapter 51. Scattered. I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. I swear by the winds that scatter things, and the heavy clouds that carry the rain, What you are promised of judgment day is true, and former generations were warned the same. And I swear by the orbit of the planets, what you say of the prophet does not make sense. Some of you call him a poet, or a liar, or a soothsayer, or a sorcerer, and you call him whatever else. Meccans who turn from this Qur'an with such thoughts are the ones who Satan deceives. They will perish, they are steeped in error, saying things with no knowledge of the unseen. 
They ask, when will this judgment come? They know it will come when they are burning in the fire and then be told, taste what you call poetry, taste the punishment for being a denier. But the righteous will have the gardens and be graced with rivers and flowing springs, reward for all they believed and did, now enjoying all the gifts that their Lord brings. They sleep a little and they pray instead, and at dawn they pray to be forgiven, and with those who are less fortunate than them, they share from what they've been given. And in the earth is the majesty of creation, signs of God's work and favours, praise be to him. And signs too are within yourselves, such as what happens when your food is eaten. You eat and drink of things that enter you, and then in a different form they come out. But you have no control in any way at all over how the transformation has come about. Don't you see that God, the Creator, made you with such abilities, and that rain pours to the ground to give you provision in food and other things are plenty? And as the rain is sure to fall, so too your provision will surely come. God is content with one day's worship at a time, so accept each day's provision until the next one. It is your Lord who sends you your provision, and judgment and destiny is with him too, and all that has been said will surely happen, just as your ability to speak is true. Muhammad, have you heard of when Abraham was visited by Gabriel and the other angelic guests? He did not know who they were, as they took the form of men, but he tried to give them of his best. They went to him and they said peace, and Abraham's interest was greatly raised, as this word was not known to be used for greeting in that area or in those days. And custom meant that in that time, eating from your host's food showed you had good intentions. So he brought a calf for them to eat, but they refused, which increased his apprehension. He thought they might be thieves or such, and asked them, Will you not dine with me and eat? But angels are in no need of eating food, so they did not reach out to take a piece. And seeing Abraham had become concerned, as he did not understand why they had refused, the angel said, Fear not, we are messengers sent to you to bring you and your wife good news. You will have a blessed son, Isaac, wise in his youth and a great man when he is older. And his wife Sarah slapped her own face in shock and laughed at what the angels told her. She said, I have never had children. I am barren and now I am truly old. They said the all-knowing one said it will be so. You will have the son of which we have told. He chooses who he will to be barren and he chooses who will give birth. And Abraham believed and asked, O angels, tell me, what is your mission on earth? They said, we will head to destroy a town whose people are lost in sin. We will take them at dawn with bricks of clay and bring those bricks down upon them raining. And we saved the obedient ones who were in that town. There was only one house that had believers. Lot and his daughters were spared the fate of the rest who perished as sinful deceivers. And we left the city as a sign and lesson for future generations to learn from them. Their sin was great and their punishment a warning for others not to do it again. <laughs>